Hi folks, Bob here with Weld.com. Due to some recent events, I need to take some time off and take care of some personal issues. In my absence, Mr. Jason Becker is gonna fill in for me on Mondays and Fridays. Rest assured, we'll keep everybody informed. Hopefully I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Thank you very much for your support. Hey guys, today we're gonna to do a video on some overhead flux core. We're gonna use gas shielded flux core wire, but before we get to that, we're gonna go ahead and take our PowerMax 105 and we're gonna cut up some of these coupons. Uh, we do a lot of different videos over here as well as some practicing and stuff like that, demonstrations. So we try to reclaim the material as much as possible. So we're just gonna go ahead and fire this bad boy up and uh, we're gonna make some cuts on here and build a couple new coupons. Uh, very similar to gas tungsten arc welding or TIG welding, we need about one amp for every thousandth of material thickness, so decimal equivalent of a half inch is 0 0.50. So we're gonna run 50 amps on here. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. All right guys, so we went ahead, we got our plates cut out, we got everything prepped up. We went ahead, took the mill scale off. We just used a regular hard rock on a four and a half inch grinder. Took the mill scale off. Like I said before, you know, a lot of people underestimate the power of cleaning your material. You want to set yourself up for success. So anything you can do to improve your chances of making a good weld, i.e. take off the mill scale, wipe off any, you know, oils or contaminants or paint, you know, you got galvanized on there, you might want to take some of that stuff off before you start welding. These are all things that can get inside your weld pool and contaminate. Uh, so we're going to be doing a demonstration on gas shielded flux core in the 4F or overhead position. And by gas shielded flux core, that means, for those of you that don't know, inside the metal core of this wire is actually granulated flux. In addition to that, we have a mix of 75-25, 75% being argon, 25% being CO2. Uh, some of the places you're gonna find gas shielded flux core is in a shop where they're doing heavy fabrication. They gotta put a lot of metal down. It's a great water on wire because you can run it in all positions. So for this demonstration, we're gonna use Select Arc 730. We're running an 045 diameter wire. We're running 280 inches per minute on the wire feed speed and 25 and a half volts. So before we weld this, I want to show you a cool trick. Um, and this is something I've actually done out in the field. This is something I've done in a shop. Uh, the, the biggest rule of welding is always be comfortable. Okay, so can I weld this 4F piece just standing here by my, you know, yes. So one of the things I want to help, you know, the younger people understand is you always want to be comfortable when you're welding. So one of the things you can do is just take a small clamp and put it below the piece that you're going to work on. Basically, I'm just going to put my pinky right through here and I'll be able to hold my gun and maintain a proper contact tip to work distance. Recommended three quarter inch to one inch with this specific wire. And that's just going to help stabilize me, right? Now I can sit here and do it one handed and everything, but we're trying to show and educate people, give them little tips and tricks on how to do things different and you know to maintain consistency. Because when you're learning, when you start out welding, the, the biggest problem is, is the lack of consistency or the inconsistency that most people have. So this is gonna help stabilize you a little bit more so you can focus on contact tip to work distance, your travel speed, your work angle. A lot of people don't realize that as they're welding, they have a tendency to get too close and shorten up that contact tip to work distance or pull too far back and that's just gonna have a big effect on your amperage. Also, a lot of people tend to have a natural sway and they don't understand, uh, they don't recognize that when they're welding that they're actually swaying. So this is just gonna help stabilize you a little bit. I prefer to tell everybody, make sure you have three points of contact. So two feet on the ground, one, port, one, one hand supporting up against the material, and then you should be good to go. Anything else you can put up against there, prop up an elbow or a hip or anything, that's just gonna stabilize you a little bit more. All right, so basically when, when we're running this, I try to maintain about a five to 10 degree travel angle. So as I'm going through, I'm going to drag the electrode. I'm gonna maintain a five to 10 degree travel angle as I go through here, three quarter inch to one inch contact tip to work distance. And then I like to point, kind of favor the top side of the plate a little bit more than the, uh, the vertical because gravity is gonna help me out. So gravity is gonna help pull that where I need it to be. And if I need to, I can oscillate a little bit. So you'll notice I'm not doing a whole lot of movement. I'm not manipulating that puddle a lot because it really doesn't need it. It's gonna lay in there nice and flat and relatively smooth. So you don't have to do cursive ease. You don't have to do whip and pauses, which I highly do not recommend, especially with a flux core application. You don't need to do that. So as you're going through here, nice, slow, steady pull, just watch the puddle. Make sure that the, the edges of your, your weld puddle are tying in where you want them to be. If not, it's okay to you know, move or manipulate just a little bit because the edges of your toes, once they solidify, 
or the edges of your puddle, once they solidify, that's going to be the edge of your toes. Uh, so you just want to make sure that those are going exactly where you want them for the weld size that you're anticipating. But other than that, um, it turned out relatively nice. Hope you guys learned something. I really enjoyed teaching it to you. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the newest edition of HelpMeWeld.com. All right, so here's another segment of HelpMeWeld.com. So make sure if you guys want to be featured in this section, post to hashtag HelpMeWeld.com on Instagram or on our Facebook page. You can go in there and just post in the regular group. Also, try to make sure to give us as many parameters as you guys are using. So travel speed, travel angle, uh, wire feed speed, voltage, you know, type of, type of wire or electrode you're using, diameter, gas, gas flow, all those things. So the more information you can give us, uh, the more areas we have to kind of help you out along your journey. Hey Bruce, looks like you're having some problem with some NR233 1 16th flux core wire uh, with slag inclusions. I've ran a lot of this wire, uh, it's a common problem. Two of the best things I could recommend is A, uh, which is probably the most obvious, is clean, clean your weld out after every pass. So dig all that stuff out. A uh, wire wheel on a grinder works really good as well as get a small you know, dental pick set from a big box store, local hardware store, whatever, and use those little dental picks to get in there and any, any spots where you didn't tie in properly. This stuff is a deep penetrating wire, uh, so as long as you can get the slag out, you should be able to burn back through and, and penetrate into good metal. Um, another thing that could be throwing you off here is your travel angle. So with this wire specifically, uh, most flux core wires, you're going to want to point 90 degrees into the joint or even face five degrees down as if you're dragging the puddle up the plate. Uh, as weird as that sounds. If you you know if you're trying to push that wire up, uh, the, the chances of you trapping slag in there are a lot greater. So try those two things, you know, better interpass cleaning as well as changing your, your work angle and then make sure you've got that you know one inch stick out it requires. Uh, NR233 is really susceptible to um, a lot of welding discontinuities if you don't pay attention to that one inch stick out. So Hopefully that helps. Let us know in the comments. Uh, keep us posted with your progress. Uh, if you guys want to be featured, make sure to you know, join our Facebook group. And you can also use hashtag helpmeweld.com on Instagram. Until next time, make every weld better than your last.